Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about the Republican pollsters in the 2024 election. These Republican-leaning pollsters who are clearly biased, you know, are, are, are uh, tied with other Republican organizations, clearly, like they're not trying to hide it or anything. I mean, Rasmussen they uh, is an example of a, of, of a Republican-leaning pollster. I mean, they have a, um, whatever, they have a... Um, um, a sort of subscription that that users can buy where they talk about Republican politics and everything. They clearly show who they favor, which is fine. Um, but even some of these Republican pollsters like Rasmussen, and this was a shock to everyone, are showing Kamala Harris ahead in this specific Rasmussen poll by six points. Now, before we get in depth into this video, I do want to say thank you all so much for getting uh, the political chatter to 10,000 subscribers. We finally did it. I mean, that's been the goal from the very beginning. And way uh, before I could have ever expected, we got there. I mean, this surge of, of subscribers started, um, you know, not too long ago. And then we just got to 10,000 so quickly. So thank you so much. This is the first video after 10,000 subscribers that I'm making. So with that being said, again, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. And let's talk about these Republican polls. As I said, Rasmussen Reports is a Republican organization. They are intertwined with the world of Republican politics. Um, I believe, you know, sometimes Republican po uh, politicians use Rasmussen for their internal polls, you know, to show donors, say, hey, we're winning in a race, but it's close, give us money, stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, this is not debated, obviously. We've got Rasmussen, which is a Republican-leaning organization. And then we have Trafalgar. Don't mind this. We're, um, I'll explain that in just a second. But Rasmussen, again, they released a poll. You might see a lot of numbers here. But more so, uh, more than anything, look at this graph. Look at the graph they provide. In July, when the race started, in the very first poll on July 23rd that Rasmussen conducted, we see that Trump had a lead of 16 points. You know, absolutely um, outrageous, right? This would have never happened. So you can just see their clear bias there. And then today, September 15th, sorry, yesterday, they released their updated poll where Kamala Harris is ahead by six. Now, just three days, um, uh, yeah, just three days before that, on September 12th, they also conducted another poll. This one, though, had Donald Trump up by 6%. So Kamala Harris has taken the lead in Rasmussen polling, which is just shocking to see. I mean, it's it's even outside the margin of error of 5%, which is a very high margin of error since Rasmussen is not a good pollster. But 6% is an extremely healthy lead for Kamala Harris in any poll. But Rasmussen, it's almost unbelievable because if, you know, we're um, comparing Rasmussen in their 2020 results, which were actually somewhat accurate, um, kind of because they didn't overestimate Biden as much of these other pollsters did. But if you take uh, Rasmussen's number and, you know, kind of um, vary uh, how much they were wrong, how much they underestimated Biden in 2020, this would be an enormous landslide. It really would. I mean, six points alone would be a landslide on the, uh, in, um, wow in the electoral map, because Biden won the popular vote by 4.5%. So if Harris is doing 1.5% better than Biden in 2020 nationally, let's assume that just happened in every state, then you would have North Carolina going to Harris. You would have uh, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia being lean margins. You would have uh, Michigan almost being a likely state. You'd, you'd have Florida incredibly tight. But, you know, Biden won in 2020, and you would be outpacing, if you're Kamala Harris, you'd be outpacing his numbers nationally. So six points in Rasmussen reports, it, it, I mean, it's, uh, it's stunning, really. I can't believe um, that Rasmussen would release numbers like this, considering their, their uh, audience. Now, it doesn't just end there. I do want to bring up another example, um, not as huge as, as Rasmussen, as this poll, but this is from the Trafalgar Group, which is another uh, heavily Republican-leaning organization. We see that they have a C rating, some of the worst, uh, you know, one of the worst pollsters there is. So they did a poll in Nevada. Now, this poll showed Kamala Harris ahead in the state of Nevada, when the last poll, just eight days ago, 
had Trump ahead by three. So these Republican organizations are saying that um, that Kamala Harris is not only surging, but that she's winning. That's huge. And now these numbers may not seem insane. I mean, this Rasmussen poll, this should come out of surprise. Uh, even if this was any normal poll, a six-point win is still very good. But, you know, it, this isn't a crazy number, right? A bunch of polls have, have uh, Harris ahead in Nevada. Let's just take a look here. But again, it's the fact that in that case, it is Trafalgar. We see that, you know, um, well, uh, 538 says that the poll said she's actually up by two. So maybe um, the Twitter people, 538, got it wrong when you rounded. 2% is even better. But that's better. Again, Trafalgar is saying um, she's winning uh, by 2%, which is more than what the vast majority of polls show. I mean, only a few polls here and there. Morning Consult, Harris plus four with Bloomberg plus three for Morning Consult. Only a handful of polls have Harris um, ahead by more than two points in Nevada. She's only ahead by 0.3 in the average. So Trafalgar, why is this so important? You know, why is it important to see um, uh, an organization like Trafalgar saying that Harris is ahead by one? Well, here's my favorite example, and I'm sure I've brought this up before. This is my very favorite example when bringing up uh, biased Republican organizations, uh, pollsters, like Trafalgar, like Rasmussen. Uh, this is an example of a Trafalgar poll. So this uh, poll that they did in 2022, in September, this was a poll of the Vermont U.S. Senate race. So in 2022, Vermont had a Senate race between Democrat Peter Welch, Republican Gerald Malloy, and in their poll, we see Peter Welch was on track to win by 6.5%. It was 49.7 to 43.2. 6.5. Now, are you ready to see the actual results? Brace yourself. Let's go. Senate 2022. Again, 6.5% in the Trafalgar poll. The actual results were Welch plus 40. They said Welch would win by 6. He ended up winning by 40. I mean, yes, it's comical. It's funny. But it's just an example. You should not take the word of these Republican organizations. I mean, there's nothing wrong with their existence. But these are for, you know, their subscribers, right? They're paid subscribers. It's to, you know, hear a narrative, uh, in some cases, for Republican politicians to use in their campaigns. You shouldn't take um, these results at face value at all, except if you're doing what I am in this case, which is making a point at, you know, Kamala Harris is winning these polls when in 2022, they overestimated a, uh, a or they underestimated a Democrat, a Democratic candidate for Senate by 34 points. I mean, that's almost difficult to do, to be completely honest. It's almost difficult to get results like this, um, but Again, 34 points, and now they're showing Kamala Harris ahead. You know, it, it really is unbelievable to see these po these Republican pollsters, Rasmussen, Trafalgar, saying that Harris will win the election. I mean, if she won the popular vote by six, like Rasmussen is saying, then she would win Wisconsin by lean, Michigan by lean, Pennsylvania by lean, Georgia by lean, Arizona by lean, Nevada by lean, North Carolina by tilt. Florida would be lean, Texas would be lean. Um, not to mention all the other ones. I'm, I'm sure there are more. She wins by 100 electoral votes. She outperforms Biden's electoral vote margin in the 2020 election. So again, I can't believe that we're even talking about this. Where Rasmussen, in July when the race started, again, just shows, shows you how outrageous some of the results are, had Donald Trump ahead by 16 points nationwide, 53 to 37. Since then, Kamala Harris has turned the race around gained 22 points nationwide. She went from being down 16 to being ahead by six in the latest poll from yesterday, 50 to 44. Again, it's very uh, unbelievable. And again, these are, uh, as I said, you know, with these Vermont results, these are results that you shouldn't trust. So I don't even trust um, you know, I don't use Trafalgar polls. You know, you might notice I post, um, basically all polls, all new national polls and battleground state polls on my community tab. I never post Trafalgar. I never post Rasmussen. I never post, um, Data for Progress, which is a Democratic leaning 
pollster because, you know, they have other intent in mind. They are not trying to publicize uh, what they have, the results currently being the state of the race in a state. So, um, again, so you, the point is, I, what uh, I was going to make, what I was trying to make, is that you shouldn't look at this and say, oh, Harris is ahead in Nevada because Trafalgar says she is. But you kind of should, I guess, because I'm saying um, you shouldn't say that she's ahead by a point. You shouldn't think that. You should probably think, whoa, if Trafalgar is saying this, then what is she actually up by? Because I do think she's up in Nevada. If Trafalgar is saying a point, then it's probably a lot. I would expect Trafalgar to have Trump ahead by like three, four, or five. So to see Harris ahead at all, it's shocking. Even more shocking is the Rasmussen Reports uh, poll, plus six nationwide. So that I can't believe, but thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe down below. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers now. Can we do it? Let's see. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.